a lot of the way leaders still work today is they get trapped in a very linear mindset. They believe the things that made them successful yesterday are the things that will continue to make them successful today and tomorrow and the next day. And the interesting thing about technology is it's different. It sort of looks a little bit crappy, doesn't work so well, and then suddenly it starts working and goes exponential. Now, just like businesses have lots of products and services and you need to continuously innovate your product and service <coughs> portfolio to stay relevant, just like products have features and you have to continuously innovate your products for your product to stay re uh, relevant, humans have behaviors. So you need to continuously innovate your behavior to stay relevant. And really my argument is it's not organizations that get disrupted, it's actually the individuals who lead those organizations that get disrupted. They hold on to behaviors that are no longer relevant, that are outdated. This is uh, sort of one of my favorite quotes I've been using for um, a long time now because I think it really just encapsulates for me the linear mindset or the thinking that we're in. We have this amazing 21st century technology, but yet we're still holding on to 20th century uh, processes all built on top of 19th century management principles. Very, very simple. Uh, who here uses annual budgeting cycles? Does anyone know when that innovation was introduced? Charles McKinsey, when he was working with Henry Ford at the start of the 19th century, has anyone done anything ever different than annual bu budgeting in their entire career? Because that's the way we always did things. Anyone here doing annual performance reviews? Do you only get better once a year? <laughs> hey. All right, so it gets you thinking that we're using these sort of behaviors because we've always done it that way. Uh, why would we do something different? And it sort of really gets you to think about that. And, and this is what really brought me to this concept of uh, unlearning. Because, uh, now, now, people often get very upset when I start talking about unlearning because they sort of have this sort of sunk cost fallacy on all the investment they've made in their personal development or skills to date. Uh, especially in this room, right? You, all your feedback mechanisms are telling you you're doing the right things. You're the head of, the executive of, you're the leader of something. So you must be doing the right things because you keep getting promoted. Um, but really, the way I try and get you to think about unlearning is this, and this is how I define it. It's actually moving away or letting go of once useful mindset and acquired behaviors um, and making space then for new information to come in to inform your decision making and, and action. So what I really need you to think about is you have to continuously innovate your behavior and recognize when the current behavior you're using are not driving the outcomes that you want and own it. And lots of people ask me questions like, well, how do I know I need to unlearn? This is what I get you to think about. Where are you not living up to the expectations that you have for yourself? Where have you set yourself an outcome that you're trying to achieve, but you can't seem to get there? Where is there situations that you're sort of avoiding? Things that you sort of know you got to do, but you don't want to do it. Maybe you've tried everything you know, and you're still not driving the things that you want. These are all examples that your existing behaviors are not driving the outcomes that you want, and you probably need to unlearn. You, not somebody else, you. 